Welcome to CWH. We are pleased to be able to broadcast messages from the Word of God where we can hear the glorious gospel together. Today's message titled, Job, Pure Gold, speaks to having troubles and trials in life and how we can remain strong in our faith. God bless you. I'm Pastor Salem, and I want to welcome you to the Christian Worship Hour. And we're just so glad you opened the doors for us. We'll be coming to your home or your, or your tractor, or maybe your car, wherever you are. And we just will all worship the Lord together. And we have an exciting sermon today. It's about Job and uh, how he had so many troubles and trials, and yet they were for good. And maybe you're having some trials today and some troubles and sorrows and loneliness and whatnot. But this lesson from Job is going to bless you and help you. I just know. But first of all, I want to share some of the letters. And I hope that you'll continue to write. And we'll give the address at the close of the service. And uh, we just read every letter we get. We pray for the people that are asking for prayer. And we support you the best we can. And then, of course, you need to help us because we have to have your help also. So here's some of the letters. The first one is from Rochester, Minnesota. And this person writes, I'm happy to have listened to Pastor Salem. I'm so glad to see the absence of the $10,000 Rolex and the necktie that usually were usually worth more than I live on in a month. Money is, of course, necessary to pay for your airtime. But as seed, I do not agree with that doctrine. Jesus said the seed is the word of God. And that's what I see you doing, sowing the word. And then he goes on and he says, I almost never send money to TV preachers. However, I'm convinced that you're, you're, uh, blessed, uh, you're blessed, humble, and uplifting ministry is worthy of support. Please accept my widow's might along with my fervent prayer that the Lord will keep you on the air in Jesus' name. And so here's a dear brother's writing, and he's, a, he's going to trust us with his gift. But I want to tell you right off of the bat, we are a member of the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability, and they check us to the penny, what we receive and how we spend it. So when you give something, it'll go for the advancement of the gospel. Here is uh, Olivet, South Dakota. And I want to say, first of all, that uh, I'm a sheep herder. My dad always has sheep, and so I took care of those sheep. But I have cowboy friends who love the Lord, just like I love the Lord, and we're one in the Lord. And this is from a cowboy friend of mine. And uh, listen to what he writes. His wife is writing, and she says, I'm writing this for my cowboy husband. And he's on his, and he's on his deathbed, by the way. I'm writing this for my cowboy husband who may made his eight-second ride, and Jesus is picking him up. And then he quotes, he uh, gives this, a message, and his wife writes it down. And he says, I'm going downhill and can't keep going. I praise God for keeping my pain down. I will meet you in heaven and we'll talk things over. God holds my hand. Please know that we keep you and your staff in our prayers and will continue to su support you. God bless you, your old cowboy friend and his wife. And so this man is Byron Whaler, He's in Olivet, South Dakota, and he's gone to meet the Lord. Since he written this letter, he went to be with Jesus. And we have another dear brother who loves the Lord, who also has just gone to be with the Lord, Lee Clawson, Evansville, Wyoming. And here's two men that were bull riders, tough as they come, but their heart was tender toward the Lord. And each one of these, I've called them and talked to them, and at the end I'd say, I love you, Byron. I love you, Lee. And they all say, we love you, Pastor. I love you, Pastor. And that's what we have in Jesus, this wonderful bond. And I'm going to see them in heaven. I just can't wait. Let's see. Here's Milford, Connecticut. I just accepted Christ as my Savior. Please send literature, literature to help me. I'm interested in your free Bible study. That any literature for the backslider will also be helpful. Thank you for your concern. And so we sent literature, and we also have a little Bible study that we send out every month. And this month, the month of August, is that we're going to talk about the Bible, pictures of the Bible, like a sword, or like a hammer, or like a fire. So it's a really a nice little study. 
and it's called The New Song. And so now you get your pencil and paper, and at the end of the service, I'll give you the number, and then uh, you can uh, write to us and help us in the work. One more, Kansas City, Missouri. I have dedicated this life to God. I used to be on the front lines. I was keen to what God wanted, and I obeyed. I fell away. I'm trying to get back to grace. I'm a military veteran who is starving spiritually and wrestling daily. I need your prayer and encouragement to start this walk again with the Lord. I want to thank this dear brother for his services to our country, and we've sent literature to him. We all do this to many prisoners, to people that are on Social Security and so on. So get your pencil and paper. We'll look at that in just a minute. But let's look at Job. And uh, I, when we read about Job, I always ask the question, you ever have, have you ever had sorrow? Have you ever said, why was I ever born? Have you ever said, why did this sorrow come upon me? Why did this happen? Well, if, if you, you've asked that question, I want to ask you something. You know what? There was a man who asked that question centuries ago. His name was Job. Job. When did he live? No one knows except it was at the beginning of time. Where did he live? He lived in the land of Uz. Where is the land of Uz? Nobody knows for sure. What was his race or nationality? Again, we cannot be sure. We just don't know. But we do know some things about Job because the Bible tells us that he was the richest man in the country. None met or excelled his wealth. And he was as righteous as he was wealthy. And that doesn't happen very often. But the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us in Job chapter 1, this little incident. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also unto them. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one who feareth God and shunneth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. And then this is what Satan says. He says, God, you put forth thine hand now, touch all that he hath, and he will curse you to your face. So God accepts Satan's challenge, and God and Job is subjected to severe trials. In quick succession, four terrible things happen to him. Loss of property, loss of loved ones, loss of health, and loss of his reputation or his good name. But in spite of all that, Job's faith remains strong. He does not turn against God. Now, mind you, mind you, he doesn't understand God. He understands why, I doesn't understand why all these things are happening. But even though he doesn't understand, he searches for meaning in it, but he does not turn against God. So then he has his friends come to talk to him. Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, Elihu, did I say friends? Well, they were worse than friends. They gave him some, they gave him some information that was just terrible. And they were wide off, way off base. And instead of being a help, they were more of a problem to him. And finally, the friends closed their mouths and Job was, a, and God was alone. And in chapter 23 in the book of Job, friend Eliphaz has just said in a judgmental way, Acquit thy, now thyself with him and be at peace. And then Job replies, Oh, that I knew where I might find him. The anguish of heart portrayed here is the fact that Job was unable to make contact with God. And considering the advice of Eliphaz, and then as Job answers him, that's a statement that stands alone. And it says, this is what Job said. He knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tested me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Let's look at that beautiful statement for a minute. He knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tested me, I shall come forth as pure gold. In this the declaration, Job clearly sees two things. He sees himself and he sees his God. 
in his reality is, is outstanding. Job is right there. He has lost everything. He's upset. He's angry at his friends for their groundless accusation, and he's sorrowing and all. And then he gives this eternal truth, and that is, when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. That's a remarkable statement. It tells us that Job realized that the testing of life was considered comparable to the purification of gold. That's what he's saying, the trials. And it took fires to do that. It took testing to do that. It had to have fires to get all of the alloy out and the impurities out of these things. And so there has to be the fires that have come upon us as believers in Jesus Christ. And we have to have the testings and the trials to purify us. There are impurities in my life. There are things that shouldn't be there. There are things that I need to be doing. And so uh, the furnace fire comes upon me. And Job is saying, I know. I know when it's all done. I know when God is through with me, I'm going to come forth as gold. Job is saying, I know my life has, has a meaning. It has a purpose too. And I'm going to have to have my life purified. And I'm going to have to go to the furnace to do it. And then Job says that wonderful, wonderful to God, speaks of the wonderful God. And he says, he knows the way I take. He knows the way I take. Job is saying, I know there's a purpose for my life. I know there's a reason for my being born. I know there are potentials within me and things that I could do and should do. And so in the same breath, Job is also saying, I don't know how to accomplish this purpose for my life. I don't know how to develop, fully develop the potentials that are in my life. I don't know, but God knows. He knoweth the way that I take. Job knew that, but there are multitudes today who don't know that. And they just think that everything, they know that everything themselves. And they make all the decisions themselves. And they don't need God. And they go away with their reasoning and so forth. But when they come, we have to include, if you want to really find out what's in your life, if you want to see what you're born for, if you want a pure outcome as is pure gold, you can't do it alone. God has to be in the picture. And I'll tell you why he has to be in the picture. Because this life is not of the earth alone. It's a life that's tied up with eternity. And I don't care how smart you are, you don't know anything about eternity and what's going to happen in eternity. But God knows. And that's why we, we, we give God our life because our lives are tied to eternity. And the ultimate value of my life is not to be found in this earth. It is to be found as I walk with God. And so here God, he says, he, God, knoweth the way that I take. God and God alone can lead and direct and cleanse our life. And we have to submit to him and let him put us through the furnace and we'll come out as pure gold. So the reason I was born was that there was a purpose for my birth coming into the world. There's a reason that I was born. There's a purpose. There's something to be done for me. And I'm going to tell you this. You can be told why. You can know why you were born. Would you like to know the purpose for your life? Would you like to know how what God intended to come out of your life? Would you like to know that to be perfectly fulfilled in that way? Well, then there's only one thing to do, and that is to not, not to know myself, but to give myself to God completely in his hands. And that's why we have God. He alone is capable of doing all these things. He alone knows our earth life. He knows how our earth life connects with our eternal life in heaven. He knows in, the, in all of these things. And in order to accomplish these things and these purposes, well... We have to have God, and we have to submit to him. That's what Job is doing. Job is saying, when he hath tried me. That means when I have more than the knowledge of God, when I have submitted to the hand of God, if I'm letting God test and try me, if I'm submitting to him so that he can accomplish his, his will, he says, if I'm, if I'm not fighting God, if I'm not resisting God, if I'm submitting to God, if I'm bowing to God, then I will know the potential of my life and the reason I was born, and I'll come forth as pure gold. Uh, it's exactly it. Look at what, look at how he says. He, God, knoweth the way that I take. 
When he, God, hath tested me, I shall come forth as gold. And so Job makes the beautiful statement about himself and his God. He is conscious of his God. He knows his relationship with his God. And he gives himself over to his wonderful God to lead and direct. And so Job saw all the experiences he was passing through. He saw all of all the things that he lost, his family and his money and everything else in his name. When he saw all of that thing, he saw the flames, the flames of the furnace that was purifying him and making him and testing him and making him so that he'll come forth as pure gold. Regulating very carefully those flames, the flames that hurt, the flames that perplex, the flames that bring despair. Remember this. There are never too many of them because God is in control and he's going to bring forth the gold and he's going to have the fire and the testing and the trials, but he's always in charge of everything. And Jesus and the apostles has taught the same truth that God is in control of these things and he'll never make it too heavy for us. James talks about that, the book of James. And the people of, of James's day the church was going through severe troubles and trials. They're fed to the lions. They were being crucified. That was the flames of the fire that came upon them. And those dear friends in the furnace, James writes to them, you're going through all these testings. This is what James says, James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he hath been approved, he shall receive the crown of life. He'll have become all that God wants him to be, and he'll be rewarded in heaven with the martyr's crown, with the crown of life. To really understand that, you need to write the whole book, read the whole book, because they were going through experiences that baffled them. They didn't know why they were having to face all these troubles and trials, and families were torn apart, and their little children were hurting, and they didn't understand it. And Job is, is telling them, God is in control. He is the master of all the situations of life. And God is controlling for a purpose. God has a goal in mind. God has a way for you and a way for me. If we will just let him, God knows what he is doing. And though we don't understand it, James says, those who pass through the testing, those who go through the trials of life, those who go through the furnace of life, well, those are the people that are going to find the crown of life. And there's a going to be just like Job said, I shall come forth. I'm going to come forth as pure gold. And that's what we want. James is saying you're going to find it all. You're going to find the fullness of life at the close of life. If you endure the trials and tests of life, if you stand up under the fires and the experiences of the furnace, if you accept the flames and you pass through, you will come forth as gold and God will be able to accomplish his purpose through you if we submit and give in to God's perfect plan. Paul was talking about the same thing, only this is the way he put it. He said in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not permit you to be tempted above that you are able and will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape. Paul is saying there will never be a temptation. There will never be a testing. There will never be a trial that you cannot bear. That's exactly what he's saying. And he is saying because God is the one, he's the refiner of the silver and the gold. And he will never let the flames become too severe. He will never allow the flames to the experiences of life be so severe that to the one that's tested. He knows our frame. He knows what we can endure. He knows our limits. And this wonderful, wonderful dear Jesus Christ and this wonderful God in heaven, all of these things are being given to us, but he never will exceed the limit that we can bear. People say, I don't think I can bear anymore. God knows exactly. You don't know what you can bear. Only the heavenly father knows and he will push to the limits because he has to do that to make us pure and to make us strong and to make us beautiful and give us the crown of life and make us pure gold. That's what I want and I know that's what you want. So submit to God. Never forget that. He will never go beyond the limits. 
There will be times you wonder there, but never forget that God knows and God cares and God regulates and his hand that's molding that clay and that hand that's leading and directing, that hand has a big scar in it where he died on the cross because he loved you so much. They're loving hands that lead us through life. Isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful Savior. Jesus, what a wonderful Jesus Christ he is. I'm going to tell you, friends, listen to me now. Satan is not in control of the events of our life. God is. Never forget that. Satan can bring some hard things to pass, as he did with Job, but Satan is always on a leash. He can just go so far, and that's what he did. He says, I'll, I'll take all of his property. See, God says, you can take all of his property, but Job, Satan, you can't put a finger on Job. And then Job came back, and then the devil came back. He took all the things. But the, 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 what did he do? He still, Job still loved Jesus and loved God. And so then the, the devil says, well, if you let me touch him, I'll, he'll curse you and God. He'll curse you, God. And God says, all right, you can put your finger on Job, on Job, but you can't take his life. He's on a leash. He can't do anything but what the Lord allows. And out of this wonderful testing and trial, the pure gold that Job is, and how many millions upon millions of people has he helped in the time of struggle and trial because he was true and loyal to his wonderful God. So look at that wonderful results of that fire. Now look at the results of the trials and hardships of life. That person will come forth to receive the crown of life. So I wonder today, dear child of God, are there troubles in your life? Are there trials in your life? Are you discouraged? Are you lonely? Have you lost a loved one? Have you got financial setbacks? Is there a be a million different things. Are you going through them now? Well, listen, listen to me. Lean upon God. Say with Job, he know the way that I take. He knows all about you. He's right there with you. And some people say, oh, I'm all alone. And that's the worst thing in the world to be alone. And nobody's here with me to help me. Jesus Christ is right with her by your side. And he said he'd never leave us or forsake us. And so when that troubles come upon you, you just do like Job and say, I know. I know that he knoweth the way that I take, and I'm going to come back. I'm going to come as pure gold. Job said, when he hath tested me, I shall come forth as gold. And when God is through, when the experience of life is over, when we're done with this life, when we enter the city of gold through that beautiful pearly gates, I shall see it all, and I shall know right then, yes, that was right. And I gave my life to Christ when I was 10 years old. That's 86 years ago. And I haven't always been faithful as I should have been. And I, but I've gone through some troubles and some trials. And every time, just lean on Jesus. And don't say, why God? Never say, why God? Why have you done this? You say, dear God, what do you want me to see in my life? Where do I need to change? What do I need to get rid of? What do I need to add? What do I have to do? And then God will say, this is the reason that this is here. And you just trust him. And I'm going to tell you something. Job didn't have any idea of what was going on behind the scenes between God and Satan. He had not a single idea, but he never doubted God. He didn't understand what God was doing, but he never doubted God, and you don't have to either. And so put your faith in Jesus. But dear friend, you can't do it alone. You have to have Jesus. And you said, yes, I do want Jesus, and I need help, and I want him in my life and my heart, but I don't know what to say. I'm going to tell you what to say. You just tell him that you're a sinner. He knows it, but he wants you to confess it. And you said, dear Jesus, I've sinned against you. And I ask you to come into my heart and take away my sins. And he says, I'll come in and I'll wash you clean. Though they, are red, though they be like crimson, they shall be as wool. They'll be as white as snow. They're all cleansing your sins and iniquities. Will I remember no more? So dear Jesus, I've sinned against you. I ask you to come into my heart and take away my sins. And I'll follow you and serve you the best way I can. Turn from any evil in your life and walk with him and serve him and then thank him. And if you made that prayer, you write to us. Write to the Christian Worship Hour. 
the Christian Worship Hour, and the box is 2002, and we're in Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. And uh, if you write to us, and you can, can help us with this work, but especially if you accepted the Lord, you write to us, we'll send you literature to get you started on the way. But then the rest of the story is, we will send you the new, new song if you write to us. And we got it on there. I'm going to repeat it for those on short wave because they don't see that screen. It's box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. And if you want to send a gift, you could even send it on christianworshiphour.com and you can send it from any part of the world and we'll get it in American currency and we'll pay our bills. And so we're putting into your hands, you pray and ask God what you need to do. You need to pray for us, that's for sure. And then you say, dear Lord, should I support this work? Do you want me to support this work? And then he'll tell you if you want, should or not. And then you follow through box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. Now I want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm praying today for all of those that accepted Jesus. All around the world, I can see people opening their hearts and saying that prayer of the sinner, just God, come into my heart. And you enter there, and then you'll give them help and strength. And I'm praying, Lord, for the young people today who have so many temptations and trials and I'm praying for those, Lord, who are shut-ins and are old gray heads and they ha can't get around anymore and there may be some are confined to a bed or a wheelchair. Help them to know that you love them and you care for them and there's a purpose in their life. And as old as they are, they can serve you and love you. And then, Lord, we always pray for the persecuted church. And so today we're praying for our brothers and sisters in Algeria. And they're going through the fire right now Boy, with it's taking their lives and their homes and bless them and encourage them and help us all to love you and trust you in Jesus' name, amen. So I want to thank you all for being with us today. And uh, next week, we're going to have a sermon on Elisha and you're just going to love that. But in the meantime, get out that pencil and paper and uh, write to us, Christian Worship Hour, Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. And then we'll just all pray together and we'll trust the Lord together. And someday the trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ will rise first. The rest of us will remain. We'll be caught up. We'll all be with the Lord forever in heaven. And won't that be something? But until then, let's just stay in the furnace. Let's just better and more pure, closer to God. God bless you. God loves you. We love you. And we'll look for you next week, Lord willing. My dad loved to preach because he got to tell people of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. If you would like to learn more about having a relationship with Jesus and grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, click the encouragement link on our website at cwh.org. You may also stream more programs, subscribe to our monthly newsletter, and view Pastor Salem's devotions and answers. We would be most grateful if you would pray for this ministry and help us financially to continue proclaiming the gospel. God bless you.